Okay, so as promised in class, this is going to be a video overviewing the UCR and the NCVS and a little bit on the NIVRS. Um, I'll post this little my little fact sheet that I'm going to go through uh, below this. So if you have any questions, feel free to refer to that. Um, also, if you have any other questions, feel free to leave a, leave a comment, um, send me an email, message, whatever you need to do to get a hold of me to try to get that question cleared up for you. Okay, cool. So. To start off with the uh, UCR, uh, basically UCR is sponsored by the FBI. Um, it's published annually, has been since about 1930. It's been around for a long time. Then the, the data that they basically publish are data that they pull from police stations, so local police stations. Now, there's about 18,000 in the country. Now with that said, this is voluntary. They don't have to actually submit this. So surprisingly enough, most stations actually do report this. About 97% of the population is reported in the UCR, so it's probably pretty good. So that's not really a big problem. Now, the UCR measures basically two different parts of crime, as they define them. So they have part one, part two. Part two, kind of less serious offenses, and it's like 21 in there, but it doesn't really matter. Who really looks at those? Part one is probably the ones you want to focus on. They label these as index crimes. There were traditionally seven, they did add it in eight. Um, so these are homicide. Rape, robbery, aggravated assault, burglary, larceny, motor vehicle theft, and the newest one is arson. Now, the data are probably best for homicide, rape, robbery, and aggravated assault since these are the more serious crimes and those are more often reported. So, with the UCR, there's a couple problems that you want to pay attention to. One of the problems is a hierarchy rule. Based with the hierarchy rule, is only the most serious offense is going to be recorded. When, they, when the police actually record this and then it's then reported to the UCR, or the FBI, then converted into the UCR. Now, for an example of this, say if you broke into somebody's house, um, then on your way out, the owner owner came home, and you had his big flat screen TV and like his wife's jewelry in your hand, and you're like, I'm, I'm caught, I'm screwed. So you pick up like a little figurine or something and bash the guy in the head, knock him out stone cold, reach down, steal his wallet, get outside and you realize I don't have a mask. He's going to be able to identify me. He saw me. I'm screwed. So you set his house on fire. Well, then as a result of that, he dies. Well, what's going to be reported to the police? Murder. Homicide. Even though there's arson on there, you've got aggravated assault. You <laughs> you also have homicide, obviously. You have burglary. So you have all these different index crimes on there. But they're not going to be reported because that's just how the UCR records data. Big problem, as you can see. Uh, there's also the dark figure of crime. The dark figure of crime are all those crimes that aren't reported to the police. Why aren't crimes reported to police? Great question. Say you were driving home, you're, you're almost home, driving down the street. You look up and somebody is trying to steal your lawn gnome from, from your garden. You're like, Whoa. Well, the first thing is, why is he trying to steal a lawn gnome? That's kind of petty. Second thing is, you really like that lawn gnome. So you roll down your window, you yell at him, Hey, stop that! Get away from there! He freaks out, takes off, drops a gnome. Well, it's the well, drops it, not, not broke anything like that. Um, so you go and put it back. So he didn't steal it, you think, Great, I foiled, foiled this guy's plan. No harm done. You don't report that. That's a crime. Crimes like that aren't reported. So you've got this dark figure. Um, so it, kind of going off of that, it all really depends on the seriousness. For example, if you saw somebody shot as you were driving home, you're probably going to call. If not, you're a terrible person. You might want to fix that. Now, the NIBRS, uh, the National Incident-Based Reporting System, is basically created to kind of correct some of these problems. Um, so it goes off of incidents more than just kind of total percentages, stuff like that. Now, this isn't implemented widely because most of these, the large cities have their system set up for the UCR. The NIVRS is a whole different thing, provides all kinds of different data and more details about these different offenses. Um, and then also it would get rid of this whole uh, hierarchy rule thing. Um, but the majority of the large cities and counties do not use this. Actually, the largest county to use it is Fairfax County. So, yeah. 
eventually it might move over. This whole initiative was started in 85. It's now 2013. So, uh, NCBS is the other big one you want to focus on. So you see our NCBS. It's the National Crime Victimization Survey. Victimization Survey, very key there. It's sponsored by the Bureau of Justice Statistics. It's been around since about the early 70s. The way this works, participants are drawn in, um, and they're drawn in in groups. So there's this whole group of households that are brought in, like each month, and so at that point they'll be interviewed. Six months later they'll be interviewed, and this will happen every six months for three years. So a total of 12 interviews, and then they'll be rotated out. There's con they're constantly bringing in new groups. Every month they get new groups. So you see this has been going on for a long time and have a lot of data. Pretty good. It's created. Why was, why was it created? It was created to get at that dark figure of crime problem that UCR has. So, non surprisingly, the NCBS does basically give a higher crime rate than UCR. Again, not surprising. You're trying to get at that dark figure. And again, with when you have stuff like the IRQ rule in UCR, obviously, um, crime rates are going to be higher, so that shouldn't surprise anybody. Now, because of the nature of these victimization surveys, there is this particular type of crime where if you're a victim, you cannot really report that, and that is homicide. So there's no homicide data in this, so that's a limitation. Another one is, okay, these are in households. They interview everybody in the household as long as they are 12 years old, so there's no child victimization rates reported in this. Um, so any, uh, about any given time, there's about 41,000 households, about 70,000 individuals per, that partake in this. A um, couple of limitations here. There is typically an underreporting of non stranger crimes, which is a problem because a lot of crimes are acquaintance crimes. It's a problem. Uh, like, uh, okay, so say one of your siblings beat you up. Are you going to report that? Probably not. But it's an assault. Your friend steals something from you. Talk to him. Get it back. Are you gonna report that? Probably not. You probably think it's resolved. Still, it's a crime. When you're asked about that in a victimization survey, you're probably going to report, "Oh yeah, this guy stole this from me." Also, since it's a, a victimization survey, they're basically recall, recalling things that happened to them in the past. Okay, they might forget. It happens. They might overreport things. They might underreport things. Things like that happen because of the nature of it. That's another big limitation. Hopefully, this gives you a pretty good overview of everything. Um, if you watched this, thought it was helpful, um, let me know. Also, if there's any other topics that you would like me to kind of delve into a little bit more, let me know that as well, and I'll be glad to do it.